afternoon. We want to welcome you again to OBBC Kids. We're so glad that y'all can join us. Again, we hope it's going to be a, a great time for everybody. We want you to really think about the love of God and how much He loves us and how much He gave for us. I know this is a hard, difficult time for everybody in America right now. But you know, God's love can get you through anything. It can pull you through anything. And we need to show the love of God and let the love of God pour out from our hearts to those around us. If we do that, then we'll weather all this storm wonderfully. So I just want you to really think about how much God loves you and be prepared to show that to those around you. And we hope you enjoy our program today. They each have a bunch of needles laying there in a string. They're going to have a minute <laughs> to see how many needles they can thread on a string. Go. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. 
the Lord of Lords, who is the great I am. And I hope everybody's doing good. I enjoy the games, and uh, every week I say I'm going to do an easy challenge, and I thought that string with the, with the needle, big eye needle, is going to be a, a really easy, but somehow it's, it wasn't is what I expected, but we had a good time. Um, but today I'm going to share one verse with you. I don't have my glasses, so I have a hard time reading my Bible, so I'm just going to quote it. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things will pass away. Behold, all things will become new. We know about what we've been going over in Union Church. Every week we try to do a little bit of, give you a little bit of, of gospel. A little bit of gospel is really a big thing because it changes people's lives. And so, you know, um, the first thing we really, I'm just going to review. It's not going to be a very long uh, message, but. Uh, just do an ABC. I think somebody in the church this week led somebody to the Lord using it. the plan of salvation using ABC. First, A is uh, all has sin comes short of the glory of God, and uh, you just need to admit you are a sinner. All you're doing is you agree with God that you've sinned, you've done things wrong. I've done things wrong. The Bible says you've done things wrong. We've all done or said something wrong in our lifetime. And it starts from a little baby. When you, a little baby's born, we don't teach it to jump up and cry and pitch a little fit. He just does it because it's, he has a sin in nature. We're all sinners. B is uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Just believe. Just simply trust that what the Bible says is true. Just trust what God says. Bible, the Bible says it. Uh, talk about the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how Jesus died. Uh, walked on earth about 33 years, then he, he suffered as he walked, and then he died on the cross, uh, and uh, cruel punishment just for us. And the third day, after he put in the grave, the third day he came up out of the grave alive for us so that he had salvation through him. And the next thing is to call. Just call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior. Ask to invite him in to be your, your Savior. Invite him in to control your life. Invite him in so that you have a new beginning in life. And that's what the verse is talking about. When I first got saved in September 1982, uh, that's one of the first verses I learned. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. It's just saying that things in the past that, that you used to do are say you have a new beginning. You're forgiven from that day forward. You're forgiven of those past sins and you, you're living for Jesus from then on. It does not say that you're perfect, that you're going to that you're gonna have a perfect life and never say anything wrong, never do anything wrong. I wish it was so because every day we struggle because the devil in our body is, is trying his best to mess us up that we, so we will sin. But I'm glad that, that verse says we're new creatures. In Christ. They're not, they're not new creatures in anything else but Christ. Because God is in Jesus Christ. God is the only one who can forgive sins. We can say, but I wish I could help you with you, what you went through. I wish I could just, you know, take everything you've done wrong away from you. We can't do that. But God can forgive us through Jesus Christ for all our sins and what we've done and said. Uh, I have a little illustration here. And it's just talking about uh, how Jesus takes our sins away. The Bible says that Jesus takes and removes our sins as, as, as far as the east is from the west. Look at a circle. East. Wait, which side is east? This, which one side? East. East. <laughs> Around the circle. Back to east again. It, it, it's just, it's just, it's just think of it east to west or south to, south to west or whatever. Just south to south or west to west, whatever. Just do the way you want to do it. But there's a simple illustration of how that Jesus removes our sin and takes our sin and gets it away from our life so we can have a new beginning in Christ. Well, I hope this works good. I passed it, but don't mean it's next time you do it, it's going to work right. But, you know, we uh, 
We walk in this world and we do things wrong, say things wrong. But then Jesus comes along and uh, uh, he, he invites us, whether it's a preacher come to your house or you go to church or, or somebody goes visiting like Philip and Jason and Rebecca and everybody goes and visits people. Uh, but Jesus is actually knocking and seeking you for you, you to come to him. And when you do that, he's inviting you into his, into the, the family of God. And so, but, but before we accept Christ, before that invitation, there's sin in our life. It could be foul mouth. It could be lying, cheating, stealing. It could be adultery, idolatry. It could be all sorts of bad things in our life that just fills our life up to work. The radio, now people on the radio, the TV is talking about, oh, psychiatry is good for you. Go to the doctor and get you a pill. Go to the doctor, talk it out. Go to the doctor and get things right. But that's not to Jesus. You know, Jesus sees all these sins in our life and he sees all these bad things coming in our life and everything. But you know what? Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, guess what happens? Once you say, Dear Lord, come into life to save me. I've been a, a sorry person. Just I want to be fit to heaven. I want to go to heaven one day. Guess what? He takes your sins and moves them out of the way. That's my message for today. Thank you. Amen. What an illustration on how to be saved and what Jesus does when he comes into your life. For the next couple weeks, I want to do a little series called The Commander's Commands. The Commander's Commands. We, much like in the military, the military has certain commanders, kids, and our commander just happens to be Jesus Christ. The greatest, the most powerful, um, person, spirit, anything alive is Jesus Christ. And as we saw today with the illustration, the pepper being that dark sin that we all have, right? Well, Pops shows what Jesus does when Jesus comes into our life and the sin just begins to, he just removes the sin. Just that forgiveness removes the sin. What a great commander and chief we serve. Well, kids, I think sometimes we have thought that God gives us commands that are bad. Or God gives us commands that don't, they're not as fun as some things. And I'm here to tell you that that's not the truth. The commander gives commands and they bring life, they bring liberty, and God gives them from a heart of love. So today I want to look at the life that God gives us or Jesus gives us from his commands. The commands that are found in the Bible, and if we obey them, it doesn't take us away from having a great life. It gives us a great life. So today, looking at three quick points, and we'll be done because Pops did an awesome job on that. Number one, kids, what type of life does God's word give us? It doesn't give us a bad life. It gives us eternal life. Number one is eternal life. John chapter 6, verse 68 says, Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. So kids, much like people think that, well, God's commands are not fun. They're not good for us. That's wrong. God's commands gives us life, gives us eternal life. Number two, what type of life does God's commands give? The commander has commands, and they're found in the Bible. They give us eternal life. And number two, they give us earthly life. Some people say, well, the best way to live is to live for you. Not according to John in the Bible. John 10.10 10 says, John 10.10 10 says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come, talking about Jesus Christ, that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. The best life you can live is found from obeying the commander's commands found in the Bible. Again, it's not the worst life. It's eternal life, number one. Number two, it's the best earthly life you can have. And then number three, kids, it's equipping life. What does that mean, equipping life? Philippians 4.19. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Equipping life. This is the type of life that God gives us from his words. Our commander's commands, they give us life. They give us eternal life, earthly life, 
and then they give us equipping life. What does that mean? Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according, or your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God can equip you kids with everything you need to live a life that is well-pleasing to him. Does it matter your situation? When Jesus comes into that situation, like Pop showed us, guess what? He begins to do away with the bad that we've been that we've done. He begins to give us strength when we need it. He begins to give us forgiveness when we need to show it. He gives us love to those that we once hated. Our commander gives us commands found in the Bible, kids, and they are not bad for us. On the other side, they are best for us. What type of life do they give? They give eternal life, they give earthly life, and then they give equipping life. You cannot be equipped, kids, for the life that we're living today without God's word, without obeying the commander and his commands found in the Bible. So if you haven't taken time, please rewind the video. Look at the illustration again. Ask Christ then and then obey his commands because it gives us the best life possible. Let's pray. Dear God, I am grateful for what, what you've done on the cross. I'm grateful for what you're doing in our life, and I'm grateful for what you are going to do in the future. Thank you for the commands that you have given us in your word. They are not for our, 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 our wrong, or they're not for our failure. They're for the best life possible someone can have, and it's found in your word. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I've been seconds on this. I'm going to leave it in. Oh, yeah. Look, I'm going to be going over here.